Hey, how is everybody? Um, someone wanted me to do a vlog, which is a video something diary, um, and it is a bit intense. And please now turn this off if the subjects of suicide, depression, and so on are triggers for you. Go ahead and do that now. You're not missing much. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, like I said, a lot of people have been wanting me to do vlogs and what's been going on and so on. Um, I was going to do the problems with my website, which might be being shut down because it's it's just it's too much money to keep it running. Um, but I'm going to make a separate video on that. Um, I do not condone um, the act of suicide, yet I'm not going to sit there because... When someone is suicidal, a lot of mistakes people make is they judge them. You know, they call them names, cowards, freaks. Um, you know, they try to make them feel guilty or they'll say, don't be stupid or something. And that just, it makes it worse. Anytime someone is suicidal, oh, another favorite thing is, oh, they're looking for attention. Um, and, I mean, you don't know what is going on in that person's mind. You don't know. Um, first thing you do is you never leave that person alone. You get most, if not all, the lethal items out of the way. You know, have someone close come by, come by, talk to them in a non-judgmental way. Maybe talking about uh, things that are good for them that are in the future. You know, don't be like. You know, look how selfish you're being and um, just think about what would happen if, if, if you, if you succeed and you, you never say stuff like that. It makes it worse. I mean, a lot of times you feel like saying that, but it, it makes it worse and you call 911. Um, that way they are taken to emergency room and they are seen by trained professionals. Okay. Um, and uh, it's, I sound very hypocritical saying that, but it's, it's hard to explain because I... I think this is true with everyone. We're always better at helping others than ourselves. This is something I wrote. I wrote it about two months ago. It's three pages and a quarter page. You know, if you're going to listen to it, I just listen to all of it or uh, whatever. Um, you know... Uh, but this is, this is still pertinent and kind of what's been going on. Um, first off, you know, I had a hard birthday, but I, I think a lot of you, uh, a couple of you had, had sent some money to my PayPal and, uh, though I wasn't asking or hinting for it, that really made my day. Um, but just some of it is my family. Um, 
as you all know, you know, I have an uncle I'm somewhat close to. Uh, he, um, you know, he's like my payee. He kind of does my bills and stuff. It's with my money, you know, I I get paid like around the beginning of the month and he knows approximately how much my bills are. So he'll put that in his account and then as he gets my mail, he'll pay it. Um, and, you know, occasionally he'll help me for rides and, and shopping and stuff. You know, we used to be somewhat close. We used to go out and do things together. And that's just not happening no more. And it's sad. Like four years ago, we even had a family meeting. Um, and, you know, he said he didn't mind coming over for maybe an hour, two hours, watching TV, you know, uh, having dinner, ordering out or whatever. Um, but that has never happened. Um, and we used to go out and do so much stuff. Um, you know. I have a brother. He lives like a five minute drive. He hasn't talked to me since the Christmas of 08. You know, he had a daughter in March of 09 and he thinks that kids can catch mental illness which isn't true and is pretty ignorant on his part. Um, it's uh, pretty sad. And uh, I have a sister and a brother-in-law. They, they moved out of that house that my brother now lives in. They live in a nice big house in Epping, New Hampshire. And my mom moved in with them as kind of a live-in babysitter. She used to be a five minute walk around the corner from me and I don't see her uh, that often. And uh, that hurts, you know. Um, I don't see my sister or brother-in-law that often and, and that hurts. I know they're extremely busy people um, you know, they have like a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and, uh, Aiden, he turned one in March, and they both work full-time. They do have their date nights, but I think once every couple of months, if they really, truly wanted to, they could come visit me, even if it's for a half hour. And they live about a 30 minute drive away from me. And my sister said that if I can take a cab there, she or my uncle uh, could give me a ride home. But that's a very expensive ride. And, and it's sad my uncle doesn't bring her buy or bring me to my sister's. As you all know, I've never owned a car just because of finances and uh, stuff like that. Um, and then the night before, the infamous night, which was about Friday, two, three o'clock in the morning. So early Friday morning or very, very late uh, Thursday night, however you want to count it. So it has been seven days. Um, I talked to my best friend, Paul, and I told you all about him. Uh, I've known him for 17 years. He knows me more than anyone. You know, he's always been very stabilizing for me. And we introduce each other as stepfather, step, step, uh, son, and we're best friends. And he's really my only friend. And 
you know, we used to be roommates the first three years. Um, it was a co-ed place. You know, we shared a kitchen and we shared uh, um, a bathroom. It was five of us all together, three males, two females. And him and I just clicked. I mean, he's a great conversationalist. We talked to like two in the morning and, you know, very young at heart like me. And, you know, he started falling and stuff. And, and for like 13 years, he's been in a motorized wheelchair. He has visiting nurses that come and see him. He, he gives me good advice. I mean, of course, he's been rejected, but he, uh, he's always been good with women. And, you know, he says I have to go out, be more aggressive. Like I've told you, you know, I flirt and stuff. I hand out my business card when performing. You know, he says that's good and all. But uh, to get their phone number too, you know. Um, and if they say no, not to get upset or depressed. But there's other fish in the sea, which he's 100% right. Um, but, you know, he has ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes. He's had about three heart attacks. He has high cholesterol. Um, in a couple of months, because I call him like every four to eight weeks now. You know, I used to, well, actually, he used to have a futon. I used to spend the night and stuff and, you know, make dinner and breakfast. And, you know, he's the one that taught me so much stuff, like how to cook, use computers and and everything. And uh, I talked to him Thursday night and. He said that he had a limb amputated. And I got so upset. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with those doctors? I mean, and he, and, you know, he's like, calm down. That it was something that was not something that they could help. And he does not think that he's going to live throughout the year. And he's really the only person except for my family. And I've told you kind of how that situation is. Like my family and I, we're good like as far as holidays, you know, we meet to, we meet up for like Thanksgiving and Christmas and stuff. But it's hard. Um, but yeah, and I'm just, I feel guilty for not seeing him as often as I should. I'm just, I'm so scared of that attachment, of that closeness. Like now, if he died, I'd probably go off my rocker. And I think subconsciously, I've been kind of distancing myself a little bit. I'm always scared of getting that call. And he said, and, and this was not in a suicidal way at all, because we're both Catholic. And, you know, he said, look, you know, if, if I don't see you, um, we will meet again under a lot better circumstances. Because he has uh, had, he's actually literally died a couple of times, a couple of different times. And. He told me about it, it being very peaceful and so on. Uh, just look at my ultra height sessions. Um, so that's some of the stuff. And, and this here, I, I hate to kind of go over this stuff over and over. It's like kicking a dead horse. Um, and I have to take a lot of responsibility, though I have gotten better as far as going out, doing my magic and stuff. I need to get out more, you know. But this is what this says. It says, the setting on the cop show Rookie Blue 
a very good show. I love it. It's on Thursday nights. Uh, this was, like I said, uh, about a month and a half ago or whatever. There was this bus of senior citizens who got robbed, so the police round them all up and bring them to the station to get their statements. Meanwhile, this lady cop and this other cop, the lieutenant, are getting married on the show. One of the ladies, because of past hurts, even being left at the altar, and she's only like 26 in the show, her character, she's taken the statements of this elderly couple, and they overhear her saying she hates weddings as there's divorce and moments being left and being left at the altar, etc. Then the elderly woman says to her that she is, as she is leaving, trying to give good advice, she says to the young cop, honey, you are way too young to be so cynical and bitter about love. While I've been with my husband 52 years now, all great years, you need to go find yourself a great guy because life is too fun to go through it alone. And I, I agree. You may be wondering why I'm quoting or talking about a fictional television show. Well, as you know, if you've lived a while, this is a very real scenario, and you probably have friends like this as well. I'm afraid that if being single long enough, that I too will become a very cynical, bitter old man. That's another thing, and yes, I have studied this. Those who are married do tend to live longer, and even longer if they have a pet. Also, and not to scare anyone, not my point, but if God forbid I had an accident or got sick like a heart attack and I died, I could be dead for seven days or so and no one would know as I live alone. I don't mind my own company, but that is kind of scary thinking about it. I'm not looking for anyone to feel sorry for me. I'm venting and also hoping this time I'm more clear in my message. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, that is all I've been trying for years to say, but I get replies that I already know. I get replies, and yes, I do know they are said with good intentions and are trying to help, and I do thank you, and I wish all your dreams come true. As I was saying, people are like, Eddie, you do not need a girl to be happy. I know that. That wasn't my point. Or or that, Eddie, you're a male. You got plenty of time. That I do disagree with. As I want to be a daddy just as much as wanting to be married. And girls my age either have kids but don't want no more. Some have no kids and they don't want kids. Then there are some who do have kids and would not mind more. This I could be down with as I'm very paternal and would treat her other kids as if they were my own if that's what was, what everyone wanted. Then there are some my age with no kids and would love to have a couple. This I could obviously be down with. Sorry if this is a bit to read. I'll also say it again. I'm definitely not desperate. In the past eight years, I could have been with three people, 
but there was no chemical attraction. Just like there wasn't in three of my four past relationships. Sarah was cool. She is the only ex I ever stayed friends with. She's married now. She met a guy on Christian Mingle, and in just six months, they were married, and after two or three years, have been happily married. God bless her. Some might be like, hey, Ed, you are a great guy and all, but this is really getting old. I agree it is. As far as them, though, don't read or don't listen, you know. Some might say, Ed, writing about your relationships or lack of them can be turning women off as they like happy, confident people. Uh, I have that. Actually, I do. Um, what happens if I hold it in? A lot worse for me in the long run. Also, at the same time, people have wrote saying they like my upfront style and me not being afraid to be me and vulnerable. I'm me and I won't stop being me. I've also tried making closer friends here. Actually, I posted this on Facebook. Uh, than just by computer. You see, it's a tad unrealistic to think, though it happens frequently, that by first meeting on a computer, especially for a, fe a female, you know, I watch the crime shows, Criminal Minds, NCIS, etc., that any type of romance will come of it. No, and I say this on my honor, as I need to make friends too just as much. I have invited a couple of people to come over my house only for hanging out, to have dinner, watch a DVD, and I could show them my magic, whatever. And I've been told by many persons, Eddie, friends are just as important. Try making friends, like in-person friends. So I've invited this one couple over, um, but it, it, it's it's been over four or five months. Uh, you know, they, they know I'm a good guy. They've seen me over the years uh, perform. You know, they're great people. When they write me back, though, they always say they are too busy. It hurts. I'll admit I am a homebody, and that's just because I feel the security when I'm at home than other places. Also, on a low income, too, I can't afford a lot of things. And a few of my sicknesses, too, make it to where I can't come out. As here, I know my bathroom is clean. Uh, another great girl I've been invited about three times is Blank. Um, I'm not going to name names to dinner. I even, as I always ask, it's a must that people feel safe and comfortable around me, said that they could bring a friend or two. It's cool. I haven't heard from them in four or five months, but uh, they did respond to this. I haven't heard or anyway, yeah, for, I did hear from her. Look, I'm not calling them out. I'm just saying people have said to make friends and get to know them. And coming to my place is really the only way I know how. I love my apartment. I can do what I like if I'm thirsty or I want a snack. I go get it. I tell people they can do themselves. You know, 
they could do the same, help help themselves. Now I can already hear it. Eddie going to your place, especially if meeting for the first time, isn't really mutual territory territory. Try meeting somewhere. I have offered to do that, but like I said, money and never having had a car, it makes it hard. And yes, I've invited guys too. Others are, and we went to school together, and their kids love me, and my magic is blank and her sister blank, which, yes, I know they're taken. But there was a time when they weren't. I offered them to come over with their kids. You know, I can do my magic or whatever. I know, sadly, they've uh, tried to see me downtown. But with my health stuff, it's hard to know if I'll be there. So I try to announce it here on Facebook. As it's not fair for you to drive or walk to where I perform expecting to see me. And I'm not. I hate myself and my health when that happens. Actually, I do somewhat have a friend, a friend name. You've seen him on videos with me um, that you've seen on YouTube. He's helped with the computer. He's come over to just hang out when I didn't need him for my computer as well. I've known him a good 14 years. When I used to hang out in Portsmouth Square, so he knew me pretty well. That shouldn't matter. People are like, yes, but I don't know you. True, but how in the world are you supposed to get to know me if you stay away? Or vice versa. You know, it's a two-way street. I know that. I'm not going to force things because... As I said, I don't want anyone feeling sorry or pity for me. That's bullshit. Pardon my language. Though it might hurt me bad just to be up front. I've tried other ways, too, to get to know others. I've tried to volunteer. As I love helping, but was turned down. Do you know what I'd really like? to read as a response to what I write here, seriously. If not here, but in a PM, again, I wrote this on Facebook. But I would love if someone wrote, Hey, Eddie, I'm a big fan of yours. Not just personally downtown, but your YouTube, your YouTube, your magic. You really seem to know your stuff and have even helped me a bit. You seem very kind with a big heart and I'd like, and I'd love a guy like that in my heart. Look, here is my number as I definitely want to get together with you really soon or do something to that extent. You know, is that too much to ask? Seriously, man. I am, am I that bad a person? Um, I know I'm a good person. Not perfect, obviously, as we all have our flaws and fall short of the glory of God. I can dream, I guess, and maybe God will have mercy on me and take me one night as I'm asleep. I've, it's just, I've prayed to God as only He knows the future, and I own, and I pray only. And this is somewhat sort of a prayer that I, that I pray. I say, God, you know the future and how much I love you. I know suicide is a sin, but Lord, as I've prayed and others have prayed the same thing for me over 17 years now. And that is, I 
want to find a good Christian wife and have Christ good babies. You know, I'm not desperate at all, but my heart is in agony. And Lord, you know a person can die of a broken heart. My other uncle in 2005 broke, broke of a, he, he died of a broken heart. Most of us agree. Well, you know, Lord, he's up there happy with you. I just beg of you. And if you know in the future that I'll always be single, I just pray that you would take me up to you so I don't suffer any more as heartache can hurt just as much as physical stuff. If what I'm asking is, if what I'm asking for is bad, please forgive me. In the meantime, let me be your tool to help and show your love to others. Thank you, Lord, I pray. Amen. And that's what I that's what I write. And I've, I've shown that to people, you know. I express myself better in writing, I find, because I can think about things. I'm, I'm very... I don't know if I should show this or not. Um, I'll, I'll show the, the beginning of this. This is kind of graphic. Okay. I apologize once again. I want to say I love you all, and what I'm about to do is killing me. Not just literally, but um, emotionally. I don't feel like um, I don't feel like I'm made for this world anymore, and I have to go to another place. Please forgive me. It's not your fault. I love you all. This is what I'm taking. And I cannot show any more as I seriously do not want to trigger other people nor get my account thrown off. Um, but, and I don't want this to be a burden either, but people have asked how I've been doing. Now, how have I been doing? Well, within the past week, or actually the weekend, uh, my spirits lifted greatly. You know, I have a renewed energy, and I'm feeling happy. Um, I will ask if what you're just going to write is negative, and like grow up, or... You know, you're a hypocrite. You know, don't, don't, don't even respond. I, I don't need to hear it. Um, I just look very, I look forward to helping all of you. Um, and, you know, I, I do got a little bit of time, and I will mention this as I do got a little bit of time. Um, my website, it cost me $25 a year for the URL and then $25 a month to keep it up. And I don't make that. So I basically have to pay for my website. I had asked the guy, Aaron, and you know him. Insight Skate, I think, is his name on YouTube, or Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, R-O-W-E, my friend on Facebook. 
he runs my site because I said, you know, I'd like to have it just only, uh, no set price, but just for donations only. Um, I just hope that doesn't mean I have to go through close to 500 videos changing the email and having to get new business cards and stuff. But I just, I can't afford to keep my site up. It's, uh, it's getting too hard. And, um, and again, I'm happy and I'm honored and glad to do what I do for free. And I promised myself I would never beg others for money. I don't consider myself doing that. I'm just kind of keeping you informed with what's been going on with my site. It is down because uh, I have to pay the URL. And I just, I don't have the 25, but, uh, you know, that that's my responsibility in a lot of ways. But it's a responsibility I don't know if I can keep doing. All right, again, I do apologize. This is too much for some of you. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. And uh, I love you. And please smile as I'm feeling so much better. And I hope you guys are as well. And I hope you learn some stuff, especially the beginning. All right. For all hypnosis needs, go to www dot edini dot com that's e d d i n i dot com or my paypal is e d d i n i underscore eight one nine seven six at yahoo dot com thank you i love you God bless. Peace.